Hallo zusammen zu unserer nächsten Show von Finance TV. Heute mit einem englischsprachigen Gast aus Amerika, Brian Marsal, für den meisten von uns bekannt als Interims Manager ähm, bei Lehman. Ähm, er ist außerdem Co-Founder und Co-CEO bei der internationalen Managementberatung Alvarez and Marsal. Hallo Brian. Hallo. Hi, how are you? Nice to have you here. Thank you. Alvarez and Marsal is specializing in restructuring cases, and one of the most prominent cases, obviously, has been Lehman Brothers, uh, you've been working on. Um, just as a means of introduction, give us a short snapshot of how was it to, to enter Lehman Brothers, which many consider the ground zero of, of, of finance um, back then when it went bankrupt. How was it to enter it? Yeah. Um, It was, what did uh, you find? Well, what we found after four days of, uh, after four days it was sold to Barclays and we found ourselves with 20 employees and uh, 300 and, excuse me, 1.2 trillion dollars worth of claims and uh, 640 billion dollars worth of assets and no people to, to manage the wind down. Yeah. So that would be a pretty chaotic situation. But you scaled it up rather quickly, right? We initially, we, we scaled it up using internal resources. We, we uh, at the peak of the crisis, we had over 200 Alvarez and Marcel employees working the problem. Uh, that today is like 40 employees from Alvarez and Marcel. At the peak, uh, we hired 600 uh, outside contractors to help us. And today, we're down to about 300 contractors. Okay. Um, at the moment, it looks like um, you will be able to, to pay back Uh, creditors roughly 70 plus billion dollars, which is significantly more than what was expected at the very beginning. How happy are you about that, that figure? And, and how did you manage to, to increase uh, that figure from the initial estimations? Well, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the, the how, I mean, the market improved. I mean, the mm. market was artificially driven down by what was happening with real estate values and the liquidity crisis and the global if you would, the global recession that was taking place. So, so part of it is the market came back, and part of it is we just worked the assets. We worked the assets hard uh, and, and got better values, mm. and better values and took advantage of an improving marketplace. Uh, the creditors, well, the creditors are delighted, 98% approval of our plan, uh, and uh, uh, there's no greater statement than their support of the, uh, of the liquidation plan that we put forth. Mm. What's your... Um Going beyond Lehman, what's your general lessons from what you experienced while, while working in Lehman? Well, Lehman had broken risk management, and uh, it was complicated by the fact that Lehman was too big to fail, and uh, the government did not appreciate that it was too big to fail. Mm. And when the government realized it, of course, it did other things in bailing out other firms that were, that were too big to fail. Uh, but I think the two lessons I would walk away with it is, one, when, a, when, a, when a, a bank or financial institution is too big to fail, you have to, uh, you have to manage the wind down in an intelligent fashion. Mm. And then two, you need to put risk management guidelines in place so that if you've been through this pain, you don't have to go through it again. Do you think something like living wills would help? I think a living will helps, uh, most importantly, it, it helps you identify the, the, the ways in which the risk is being managed within an institution. So I do think that helps. I think it also helps in, if there's resolution. Resolution means a bank has failed and you have to wind it down. It helps the, the party who's winding it down understand what has mm -hmm. to be done. So yeah, it does help. Okay, but we're not really progressing far on, on, that, on that concept, have we? I think we're still, there's still institutions out there that are too big to fail, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't necessarily think it's too big. I think it's too complex, uh, has too much of a concentration of assets. The rules are too, uh, need to be simplified, and those administering the rules... Simplified, now that's interesting, yeah. because it seems like we're seeing a complex, rules getting ever more complex. Is that, is that yeah. a wrong, do people, do regulators yeah. just not understand? I think, I think there's been an overreaction to it, and the overreaction to what happened in Lehman is, is complexity, making it ever more difficult to administer. I think we need to simplify and reduce the level, simplify but re and, and, and reduce the, the amount of the burden of compliance on these financial institutions, yes. Reduce the burden of compliance, uh, that's interesting. What do you, what do you see, how, how is Europe compared to the U.S. on, on, on that? 
Well, I, th I think the, I don't. I think they're two very different situations. I mean, the United States uh, is uh, is underway trying to define through the Dodd Frank bill, trying to define what is regulatory uh, framework is going to be and what the guidelines are and how it's going to administer resolution. In other words, when a, when a bank fails, I think they've done a good job in the U.S. on resolution. I think that there's a there's a, a I'm not sure that we've we've established the guidelines at this point in time to really know whether or not we've got a framework that works. In Europe, as far as I'm concerned, they don't have a framework, but they will have a framework because the European taxpayer is basically saying, I don't want to go through this again. Mm. And in order to not go through it again, you need to develop a regulatory framework. What are the guidelines by which you're going to operate your business so that the taxpayers never have to put money in to bail you out again? Secondly, because there's always going to be failures. Some bank is going to be taking a risk. When a, when a bank does fail, is that failure uh, limited and can it be managed so it does not offer systemic risk to the rest of the banking system? Mm. That's, that's what has to be done. I think at the time when you, when you entered Lehman, it was the first significant big bank that was working under Chapter 11, um, as far as I remember. Now, I wonder if there's industries in the U.S. that traditionally work under Chapter 11, such as airlines, for example. Why, why does it work with an airline to work for years under Chapter 11, but why does it not work in the banking sector? Well, banking says anytime you're dealing with money, money flees. So money will not, will not stay long. If you have a plant, you, there's very little options with a plant, or very mm. little options with a manufacturing facility. So the, the, the efforts to rehabilitate a, a manufacturing facility where your assets are primarily fixed in nature is very different than when your assets are people and cash. Mm. So people and cash flee. Okay. You can't, you can't get a plant to run away. Well, but you can get customers to run away if they don't trust. You, you get customers to run away, but many customers depend on those parts. They depend on replenishment. They have, they have a supply chain which has been designed. In the financial markets, there's any number of other places they can go. Okay. What's your... Um, as a final question, in the conscious of the time, what's your biggest concern for the global financial market um, now? Have we learned the lessons necessary out of Lehman? Is this a safer world at the moment? Or? Well, my, my concern right now in the United States and, and in Europe is that there's so much fatigue uh, that, that people are forgetting. And the forgetting is, is that if you don't want the taxpayers to bail out your banks, you have to establish a regulatory framework and you have to establish a resolution plan. Mm. plan. I don't think that's, been, that, that, that's to be done in Europe, even though it's a very fatiguing situation, the overall European debt crisis. And in the United States, I don't think it's halfway done. Okay. I don't think it's completely done. So, so we still have a lot of work ahead of us. I, I think we are better off than we were in 2008, but not by a lot. But far from good. Yes. Well, thanks, Brian. Thank you very much. much. We got, as always, our three final finance questions, um, um, which I would like to ask you with answer um, short, ideally yes or no. Um, if you would be offered um, run Lehman again, um, would you do it again? Absolutely. It was a it was a blast. <laughs> do you, um, well, I already answered that. Now that was stupid. Do you think the world is a financially safer place than it was in two thousand seven? Uh, it's safer because the banks are better capitalized today in the U.S. Uh, it's safer because we know what to do with a bad bank in terms of resolution that we didn't have before in terms of powers. But it's not safer in terms of avoiding that, avoiding that kind of a hiccup. Okay, thanks. And the final question, which German company would you be interested in running um, just out of, it doesn't need to be a restructuring case or something like that, but is there a German company you think that would be really interesting for me to, to, to run for a while? One that is uh, complex, global in nature, that would be of interest. But you don't want to know it, name no. names. <laughs> <laughs> Too dangerous. No. <laughs> well, thanks, Brian. Thank, Thank you. you very much for okay. your time um, and for your interesting insights into one of the most spectacular um, events, obviously, that happened in the uh, financial world for the last 70 years. Uh, danke auch Ihnen. Ich hoffe, Sie hatten so eine interessante Show wie ich äh, mit einem hochkarätigen Gast. Mir bleibt nur noch zu sagen, am Freitag ist wieder Michael Hitzstück für uns da mit Tut nichts zur Sache. Auch da sicherlich spannende und zum Teil unerwartete Einsichten in die Finanzwelt. Und von meiner Seite und von Brian's Seite war es das für heute. Vielen Dank und auf Wiedersehen. Musik